Today we have arguably the two best teams of the tournament going head to head and one of them will face their first loss of the tournament. So will the Kiwis take flight in the picturesque Dhamshala or will the men in blue take revenge against the Black Caps for their diabolical exit last time around? It's an absolute pleasure to have you all back for our pre-match show Stumps and Sixes where every cricket movement finds its voice produced by the International Institute of Sports and Management. Leading up to this match, we preview an absolute mammoth of a fixture between the two successful teams of this tournament. And they both seem to stay unbeaten and consolidate themselves at the top of the tables. And for today, I'm your host Sakshi Jain and these are your experts, Sri Ram and Garsham. And we'll take you through today's match. So today, the two best teams are going head to head and they both seem to stay unbeaten and are in electrifying form. So what are your initial thoughts about today's match? Uh, India versus New Zealand. So, and that too in the ICC tournament. It's a mouth-watering picture, isn't it? So, people will talk about, you know, India versus Pakistan, India versus Australia, India versus England. But they won't talk about India versus New Zealand. In recent times, uh, in the, you know, World Cups happening in ODI, ODI formats, nine times India and New Zealand have faced and five times New Zealand have come out of on top. And only three times India have won and one, you know, didn't happen. So, it shows the, you know, dominance they are showing in this World Cups and these ICC events. So, for example, even if we can take the, you know, WTC World Cup in 2021 yeah. and, you know, uh, in T20 World Cup in 2021, we, you know, and in 2019, what happened? The, every Indian hearts were broken. I think Gosham will also accept on me this point. New Zealand are the real dark horses in this one. So, uh, definitely, I think, uh, see, one major aspect is that everybody expected India to be this good. Uh, playing at home, uh, we've seen India's record that has been over, not just this World Cup year, but over the past few years, uh, any type of bilateral series or any tournament that happens, uh, not only in India, but any subcontinent pitches, uh, India has been amazing. But what is really amazing to watch is how New Zealand has come together as a team, you know, because a lot of the top teams have not been able to, you know, live up to their names. We've seen how Australia has been struggling. Uh, you know, New Zealand, uh, South Africa is doing pretty good, uh, but New Zealand too, I mean, sorry, England too has been uh, a little bit on the struggling side in a few matches. So, New Zealand, uh, even though they're missing that key player uh, in Williamson, but uh, they've really come together as a team. And see, uh, I know both these teams haven't won a World Cup uh, in some time, but if you look at the number of matches played, uh, if let it be in the league stage or even in the knockouts, I mean, the knockouts they've lost, but the league stage, They've been consistently making it up there into the knockouts. So, I would arguably say they are two most successful teams, not only in this World Cup, but the last two World Cups as well. Uh, both the teams reached the knockouts in 2015. Uh, uh, 2011, we won, of course. 2015, we reached the knockouts and uh, so did New Zealand. Uh, 2019, both the teams reached the knockout. That's why we lost uh, the diabolical exit that you were mentioning. <laughs> so, yeah, it's two most successful teams should be a cracker of a contest. And for the last two times in 2015 and 2019, New Zealand were the runner-ups. So, so I yeah. think this time around, they will look to clench this. Yeah. So, India have to be careful on this time around. See, so, yeah, could, this could be the final fixture, you know. This could be the two teams yeah. that actually make it. You high chances of that happening. And since we highlighted that fact that the team to hit the first century in the World Cup has been win winning const right. exactly. yeah. constantly. Yeah. So, it will well. be interesting to see exactly. if that Zealand repeats. Yeah, okay. the, thing with, the thing with, is with uh, New Zealand is they don't have superstar kind of, uh, you know, people in their dressing lab. But as a team, they are one of the top teams to, you know, to conquer any team on a particular team. You know, you know that, that's, that's a very important thing because when you have, uh, you know, iconic players, it's, it's a great thing, of course, you know. Yeah. Uh, India is filled with them, you know. Every individual player has the ability to change the game by themselves. But when that happens, you kind of uh, depend on a certain player. You know, uh, I would I would say this Indian team is far away from it. But there was a point in time where everybody was out of form. There was over dependency on Kohli or maybe a Rohit at certain aspects. But that's not the case with New Zealand. So they put a team effort. Everybody contributes. Uh, they know their uh, roles. They know where they perform and which what type of uh, impact they need to have. And uh, yeah, four wins out of four games is being wonderful for them. So yeah, and, and another and another major aspect is see. Uh, 
India's uh, uh, New Zealand's one two chasing and they one two defending. So kind of a balanced result. So they've they've played all kinds of you know uh, strategies where they had to defend a target or even chase down a target. But India on the other hand, maybe it's a conscious decision that Rohit Sharma has taken, or you know I mean a couple of times he's actually lost the toss and has to chase. But it's worked out well for them. So uh, it would be definitely uh, interesting to see what decision he would take once he wins the toss. Uh, would he just stick to the same uh, uh, you know strategy or try to change it up? It's an interesting point to be noted that this venue has already hosted three matches of the tournament, including the upset by the Dutch uh, against the Proteas. And uh, the record stands that uh, out of the three matches, two were won by defending first. And the team uh, chasing has only won once. And if we keep in mind India's inclination towards chasing, so do you think India will look up to follow the current game plan? Um, to be completely honest, uh, I feel, see, what decision they are going to make at the toss is based on two factors. I think one is how the pitch behaves and they would also simultaneously look to play to the strengths and weaknesses. So, and the opponent's weakness as well. So, by batting first, what India would be doing, they would be negating the initial swing, uh, which is honestly New Zealand's one of greatest, you know, uh, strength that they have yeah. in their team. So, Probably as compared to the evening, they would probably get lesser swing, uh, Matt Henry and Trent Bolt. So maybe that would make it easier for Indians to continue their, you know, attack in the power play that they've been doing very well so far. So that's one aspect that Rohit's going to keep in his mind. The second aspect is, if they do bat first, uh, it is evident that the spinners will get more help. Uh, they'll be easier to grip the ball yeah. because of the no due. Exactly. So th these are, this is one uh, aspect that uh, Rohit will have in his mind. And again, the other part is playing to your strength. So, in the off chance that uh, Rohit wins the toss, uh, again, he would definitely be looking to uh, stick with his uh, proven, uh, you know, uh, formula of chasing. But then again, uh, he wouldn't be too keen because it's a long tournament, uh, and he shouldn't mind. He's he's four wins. Uh, India's four wins in, so they're at a pretty comfortable position. So maybe he would want to, you know, uh, kind of be put in that spot and he wants his uh, players to be put in that spot where they're not before, you know, uh, maybe make a whole blueprint for how they're going to defend yeah. as well. So again, uh, definitely the decision uh, lies on Rohit. But these are the aspects that I would think that would be in his mind before he makes a decision. But from a personal point of view, uh, if I, I would say they should definitely bat first because see, uh, mainly because it's a long tournament and the more they get used to playing in every kind of situations, it'll be better for them in the uh, later part of the tournament, the knockouts as well. Exactly. Considering India hasn't been won batting first. Right. So, uh, Gershom talked about India's perspective. Yeah. So, let me touch upon the New Zealand perspective, what they will do. So, if I'm in the New Zealand camp, what I will do is, I want to, you know, bat first, put runs on the board and make India to chase that. Because since in 2019, what happened, we all know. Yeah. Like, uh, it's a different story altogether. It's a long time. But still, it's the same New Zealand, it's the same India. So, since same Trent Bolt is there, same Rohit Sharma is there. So, the top order is there. The And Matt Henry and uh, Trent Bolt are so lethal when it comes to the, you know, initial spells of them. So, if they, you know, put some decent total on the board. And if they try to swing, swing in the ball, in the, you know, uh, new ball in the, you know, evening 6.30 or 7 o'clock the ball will be swinging more. So, it will be a you know, huge advantage for New Zealand if they you know, bat first and put runs on the board and uh, expect India to collapse. So, and I want to you know, appreciate Tom Latham so much. He is going so under the radar. Since Kane Williams is not there, yeah. he is doing a tremendous job for the Kiwis. Okay. So, people are not talking about them a lot, but I am giving a huge shout out to Tom Latham. See, they're definitely the underdogs. They're always the underdogs. You know, nobody, uh, nobody usually uh, gives them much of a hype. You know, because they're very, uh, you know, given their even their body language, they're not out there. They're not, you know, maybe in their body language, they're not attacking. But in in the way they play the game, in the way they are, uh, you know, uh, playing the batting or the bowling, you know, in both innings, uh, they definitely have an attacking approach. And uh, I think again, as he mentioned, Trent Bolt under the lights in uh, cloudy Dharamsala. We could, I mean, hopefully not, but we could see a 2019 recap. Exactly, yeah. at any pitch he can like swing yeah. in the ball, but when it comes to the Ramshala, Ramshala. he can just in and out, in and yeah. out. We, we all can know, like we know what he can do. So, and uh, with with New Zealand, we can tell them as uh, the smiling assassins. Yeah. Like he will be all smiling and they will be like very nice people. 
but they will just pick you where they know to do that yeah and see one another major aspect is uh, all through all through this last four matches that they've played india have uh, applied a attacking format in the uh, top first 10 overs in the power play they've had a really attacking approach which lacked before and this could be attributed to rohit sharma's change in game plan uh, you know he, he should slow start i mean he used to get there in the end he can change gears in a in a second but he used to start off slow but uh, with chubman gill's natural gameplay being attacking and even rohit's you know change in a uh, 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 approach to the batting uh, we're seeing uh, 60 odd runs 70 odd runs uh, for maybe a wicket or no loss uh, is is what their template is uh, and if india lose the toss and as he said if new zealand uh, do put up a score it would be really interesting to see if uh, india still take the same thing same approach because see uh, again uh, can't mention it enough uh, india has been struggling against left arm paces uh, beat against australia in stark uh, they they recently played really well against shaheen uh, but again you can you can always say that he didn't get much help but there is that problem there is an issue with you know the front foot not coming properly yeah. so and left arm spinners as well left arm spinners as well left yeah true so uh, that's the thing it'd be really interesting to see how they would approach the first 10 overs irrespective of the batting first or batting second but yeah if new zealand do bat first and put up Uh, even an average score, uh, 250 odd runs, uh, would be a really tricky chase. This could this could be a good test for both the teams. True. Yeah. So obviously, for both the teams having a four out of four wins, do not want to change their winning combinations at all. And New Zealand looks forward to get on the field with an unchanged eleven. But unfortunately, India will have to get on the field without their premium all rounder Hardik True. Pandya. Exactly. So because of his recent ankle injury. So, how much of a headache would it be for the Indians to replace him? See, uh, this is definitely one of India's most complete squad. Uh, you know, they have backups for each aspect. But that being said, if there's one uh, player or one type of player they don't have a backup for, has to be Hardik Pandya. Mm-hmm. And even the other player who offers the same kind of skill set is Shardul Thakur, who's already in the team. uh see shardul's a great player but he's not been able to replicate it in in this tournament so far he's been there uh probably one or two overs uh he's gone for a few runs but uh yeah there's not see every player has that one game where they've performed and they've stood up so that for shardul has not come out come out yet but again you can't you can never write shardul off you know when it really matters the most he's you know one person who can uh, really bring the game back to india again talking about hardik's uh exclusion will be a huge blow for india definitely yeah, exactly. uh as a bowler and as a batsman as a batsman is not required uh, so far to make a you know meaningful impact but again as a bowler very important um so my choice to replace hardik would definitely be shami yeah. uh so and i'll tell you the major reason why i want shami is that we still have a six bowler options if you replace uh hardik with somebody say uh, uh ishan kishan or a uh, sky you probably wouldn't get Uh, the sixth bowling option right so shami will be the first option and one more thing is see uh, if you see the last couple of matches after the, f- the first bowling change has been made so uh, we, we know that bumrah and Shir- uh, siraj shared the new ball and after the first change so usually what uh, the oppositions do they play off the first six overs not take too many risks and the first change was usually hardik Yeah. And the last match when you saw Hardik got injured, uh, there was Shardul, and we see how Shardul went for runs because that will that is when they'll be looking to capitalize on the last four overs of the power play and try to get at least fifteen, sixteen runs of every over. Uh, because then again, then the fielders go out and they'll have to play with a you know more a calmer approach. So I would definitely like to see Shami in the thing. And again, uh, if India are again, it, we've talked about how it helps the swing bowlers, the cloudy weather, yeah. and the pitch as well. So why not three premium pacers for India should be a great option. option. I would also go with the same eleven. Just uh, adding to Gosham's point by adding Shami in front of uh, uh, Hardik Pandya because it's so unfortunate. You know, these all rounders are very rare species in world cricket. True. Like we have seen Ben Stokes, but now he is struggling to bowl itself. So he is playing purely as a batsman. So you know what happened? This this all rounders, no, they put in huge yards. Okay, they have to you know the workload is more for them. Uh, be it a batsman or a bowler, their job is batting, bowling. Yeah. But as a all rounder, they have to do both. And also in the field, you know, Hardik Hardik is a character who who's a pack. Like even his presence is so good in a team. So. India is going to miss him massively as as New Zealand is going to miss Kane but uh, they are doing well without Kane but this is the first time we are going to do without Hardik so 
I would like to wait and see what India are going to do. But if the if if you ask me what I will do, I will go with you know same with Shami in for uh, Hardik and uh, same as uh, you know in Dharamshala the the pitch is so suited for Shami. And if we bring in after you know first spell of Bumrah and uh, Siraj, Shami is coming in. Obviously, the batsman is going. Oh my God! Shami and, is coming. And, and what it also does is see. So after your first spell, so if you've seen the last couple of matches, so Bumrah and Siraj are bowling their three over yeah. four over first spell, and uh, Rohit is using them according to the situation. If there's a partnership building up, we've seen him get Bumrah back to get a wicket. So now with Shami added, he can probably use Bumrah in the middle overs much more. Because he knows even if Bumrah runs out of over, he has still has Shami to bowl the death yeah. overs, or he could even bowl uh, Shami or Siraj in the middle overs. So that gives you a lot more options. Because again, uh, I would honestly like to say India would lo- uh, miss Hardik the batsman, no, Hardik the bowler more than Hardik the batsman. Because with the way the top order and the middle order set right now, we've seen every match everybody contributing. Yeah. So the only uh, you know uh, lagging is in the sixth bowler. So adding Shami to it uh, works wonderfully. So again, Shami has been on the bench for a couple of matches now. Uh, but uh, you know, even if you see, uh, you know, what's happening in the dressing room and all uh, via the BCCI uh, TV and stuff, we're seeing that there's a huge, there's a nice uh, environment that's built overall. Exactly. Exactly. So that everyone would, is coming together. To, yeah, that's the most important thing for a team, you know, to deliver big stage. And and I think I would like to attribute it to again to Rohit Sharma because see. Uh, for, when you're playing for a nation, and especially a talent, uh, you know, a, when a, a nation that has amazing talent like India does, as a captain, your, uh, you know, your work is not to tell the player how to play. I mean, they're at that level that they know. The captain's actual work is player management, and how you're going to manage the players and let somebody know, like a Shami, who has so much experience that he will not be in the eleven. And when he does have a chance to, you know, give him the right space and the right amount of temperament to, you know, walk in and perform. So I think Rohit Sharma is doing a great job at that, and yeah, Shami should be the right option uh, in the playing eleven instead of Hardik Pandya. Exactly. Shami looks sure to change Pandya for today's match, but do you see an outside chance of Ishan or Surya Kumar playing in to tackle those prospects of a top order failure, or even uh, maybe Ashwin uh, coming in to tackle the top order left handers of the opponents? Exactly. That that thing we we actually we had a discussion before this, and we were talking about uh, you know adding uh, either Ishan Kishan or Suri Kumar Yadav in place of you know Bumra. I mean, yeah, Adik Pandya, yeah. and in the place of Shardul Thakur, we can play Shami. So the problem with that is we will only go with five bowlers, premium bowlers, and let's say uh, if a person like if a bowler is getting hit, like we can't predict what will happen. Yeah. So if he is getting hit, we don't have a change bowler. So that is the problem, main problem we have. So that is the crucial factor Hardik Pandya is giving to this team. Though he is going so under the radar when he is playing, but he is not playing. No, the huge factor he is bringing in is going, you know, vanished. Yeah, and as you said, it's a rare breed getting fast bowler all rounders. Who see uh, Hardik's not been bowling uh, his entire ten overs. He's sharing with Shardul, but he has that he has that ability to bowl all ten overs. And and also come in later stages of the innings and you know when they're batting and score some quick runs, that is honestly a very big impact. Especially you know uh, he he doesn't have to play the anchor role of staying twenty to thirty overs, but he can come after fortieth over or forty five overs and change the game. Exactly. Uh, but again, coming back to your question as to why I wouldn't want an extra batsman is only for the reason that the top order and the middle order is working amazingly. You know, every match. See, they might not be getting big score. Of course, everybody can't get a big score every match, but they're all getting a start. They're getting thirties, forties, and stuff. Barring the Australia match where there were three uh, wickets early up. Other than that, they're getting good starts. So you wouldn't want to change that. Another, uh, I know, as I said, I mentioned before that Shardul uh, hasn't really performed amazingly. But see, in a long tournament. Uh, you can never write anybody off, especially somebody with uh, Shardul's capabilities, uh, who has that uh, ability to change uh, break partnerships at will. Uh, so, and also they wouldn't want to change the winning combination as much, even though they're not performing, uh, except the fact that they have to make a force change in Hardik Pandya. Uh, taking off Shardul uh, for the you know to maintain the balance of the team would be uh, really a long shot. I would, I, I definitely see Shami playing as we. Uh, yeah, but then again, uh, just have to still put it out there. Uh, you never know. 
uh, with yeah, with it's Rohit. Finally, on the you know Rohit, yeah, and, Rohit and, uh, and Ravi, Ravi Ravi's, yeah. uh, final pick. And again, I, I don't think they're they're worrying about it much as of now. Uh, just right before the toss, uh, they're going to take a call. I mean, everybody is match fit. I'm sure. Uh, looking at the bowl environment, the entire team seems to be match fit. So, looking at the conditions on on the day. And see, and another major aspect that I want to mention here is the only way uh, you might in, uh, get a uh, Surya Kumar Yadav or maybe an Ishan Kishan is there are slight chances of rain, and in a reduced uh, oh, overs match, uh, it would be really amazing to have uh, Surya Kumar Yadav come in. Maybe let's say, see the last match also. I think the one with uh, Netherlands and the South Africa match, it it was reduced to forty three overs. Yeah. But if it rains even much more and it reduces to somewhere around 30, 35 overs, having somebody like Surya Kumar Yadav who can come in and strike the ball at will could also be the only aspect where they could think about uh, exactly. uh, Sky or uh, Ishan. Yeah, still a long shot, but you, you, yeah, quite possible. Quite possible. Quite yeah. possible. But uh, the the more logical option would be definitely Shami. Exactly. So talking about New Zealand now, what are your views on the New Zealand team? Uh, I think New Zealand will uh, keen to be retaining their same eleven. they don't want to change because they are playing amazing cricket throughout the tournament still they are missing kane williamson let's not forget it mm-hmm. as a captain and as well as a batsman so it's so unfortunate for them to miss him uh, i heard reports that he will be back for the knockout stages uh, kind of that let's hope uh, he is back because the tournament will be you know quite yeah. because if good yeah. players comes in the tournament is good so uh, as of now they won't change up much because their top order is looking solid their middle order is good and the bowlers or we don't have to talk about their bowlers they are so good and uh, in top wicket takers with there is santna there is bolt there is henry like practically everyone is there yeah. so and in most runs also conway is there he is in tremendous form so you know as we know conway he is a very good batsman in india so we have seen him in ipl also so he knows to pace his innings he knows to you know go blast innings he knows to do everything and uh, the willie is also you know uh, doing very good up there so i don't think there will be much of a change there And I think I think I think no, uh, I don't think they should. They should probably go with the same eleven. Something that's worked out for them. But I think one player to watch out for definitely would be Glenn Phillips uh, in their eleven. I think again he is a very Surya Kumar Yadav kind of a yeah. player. Uh, you know, in again in a in a case of a reduced uh, innings with 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 lesser uh, overs. he would really be a major help for the team in the batting he can practically do everything everything and you've seen his fielding he's been flying yeah, exactly. he's been flying all around the ground so that see those small small things right you know saving probably a boundary and keeping a shot to two runs will eventually lead on in the bigger scheme of things you know uh, one run saved is one one run less that they have to yeah. score to win the game so having these uh, you know that's also another ma- reason why they'll miss hardik who exactly. performs in each aspect batting bowling and fielding So Glenn Phillips is also one player in my opinion to keep a uh, eye on. Yeah. So looking at both the teams they are having a very good mix of both youth and experience. So there will surely be some fiery battles we'll get to experience today. So you would like to highlight some of the battles we might see today. I think the battle between you know Rohit Sharma and Trent Bolt especially is going to be a yeah. you know, massive factor because uh, Every best batsman in the world have a you know trouble for incoming deliveries. Like beat anyone, anyone has that. And uh, you know Trent Bolt is a you know very fantastic bowler you can ever ask for in a ODI format. Beat Test bowling, beat T20. He's right up there. So obviously everyone will have a you know tinge of a you know like like a a bit of hesitation to face him. So uh, Rohit Sharma also had a you know minor problem with that. Uh, I have read a stat that in 13 times Rohit Sharma has faced him, and uh, Trent Bolt has took his wicket four times. So, yeah, he he has you know like a edge over Rohit Sharma, but I also think that's where you know uh, batsman like Shubman Gill comes in. Like he will he likes to you know hit the hit the ball. He likes to you know go for the runs. I think these two complementing each other, they can you know do well against Bolt. And and I think it's going to be really in, in, in interesting to see the approach. Right, as I mentioned before, uh, India have been looking to attack from the word go. Maybe they're they're seeing one over off or two over off, and they're going to start to at- attack. Uh, that against quality left arm pacers uh, is going to be a really nice battle to watch out for. Uh, and again, uh, in my opinion, again, um, maybe Shubman's going to be the uh, you know accelerator, and maybe Rohit's going to take a step back because once he sees off that new ball, and you know once the ball maybe gets thirteen overs, fourteen overs uh, down. uh there would literally be no help for a pacer and you know that's when the spinners come in but he'd be able to capitalize on it then 
so again the approach that rohit's going to have specifically and and to be really honest even kohli for that matter uh, all the top 3 people uh, top 3 batters of india have a little bit of a problem against left arm uh, pacers especially in the pace that uh, bolt bowls so it'll be really interesting to look at that i think the next thing the battle between you know mitchell sandner and virat kohli True. it's going to be a you know huge huge factor in the game as you know virat kohli is in tremendous form as fast as, as uh sandler is for mm-hmm. new zealand so the last time new zealand came to india in january in three odis uh sandler took virat twice so mm-hmm. he got a tremendous record and we all know like virat has a slight problem for the, you know left arm spinners yeah. so he is going to be a huge factor and uh, as well as wicket taking bowler like sandler is he is more of a economical bowler he knows to strike he knows to you know like dilute the runs as well yeah. so he is going to be a huge huge threat and that's, that's also what kohli is good at Kohli is good at staying till taking the game to the end, rotating the strike as well, and that is what Santner will be looking to not let Kohli do. So that's a very good battle, and not just Kohli. I think uh, even Shreyas Iyer, for that matter, uh, has some tendencies to you know get stuck in the crease, not coming to the front foot or the back foot, and with the tight lines that Santner bowls, you know it's 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 just there. So even if he's tempted to take that, I mean it's a very small ground. So even if he mistimes it, it might go all the way. But then again. and with those tight lines uh, to you know rotate the strike and you know change the batting to the side of that side would be uh, one thing that uh uh you know would be really interesting to look out for it's going to be a more of a you know cat and mouse game who's going to you know strike first who's yeah. going to stay back first there's a lot of mind games that's going to be played definitely you know for a spinner uh, especially you know what happens is uh, for a couple of overs if they're getting three odd runs just three runs of over for three overs there's this whole uh, you know mentality that builds up that the runs are drying up and maybe a ball that they wouldn't take a risk to hit it in the uh, hair uh, probably they would do that and that would lead to a wicket Uh, we've seen Kohli be, uh, you know, uh, really mellow and not really take the risk initially. But if the runs do dry up, uh, we might definitely see them try, you know, Kohli trying to uh, increase the run rate and you know uh, lose his wicket in the process. So another really important uh, battle to look out for is uh, Rachin Ravindra and Kuldeep Yadav. Uh, for the main reason being, uh, even though this is Rachin Ravindra's first big tournament, ICC tournament, uh, from the first match he's looked definitely in touch. and uh, i'm thinking a little bit of his indian roots might help him understand the pitch a little better uh, but then again kuldeep uh, on indian pitches subcontinent pitches has been amazing uh, so it'd be one uh, aspect to look out for and again like santner unlike santner kuldeep is not somebody who's going to drive the runs uh, that's what jadeja does exactly. kuldeep will be looking to strike you know and if he runs through the middle order Uh, which is held strong by Rachin Ravindra. Uh, it's going to open up the. Uh, I, I think if there's one small weakling that New Zealand have is their lower middle order, the, except Glenn Phillips. Uh, in terms of uh, Daryl Mitchell has not been able to perform amazing. I mean he has a couple of good scores, but you know he's not been able to have that somewhat like a Shardul Thakur. You can say he's been there, but he's not been able to give that one impactful performance. So to open up that early in the innings, maybe. 20 25 overs down the uh, first innings if they're losing three overs you're getting in glen phillips early uh, which is unlike his role of a finisher really very really left to anchor i think that would definitely put some pressure and open the game up uh, beautifully so uh, it'd be really interesting to look at kuldeep yadav versus rashan ravindra i think india will be quite relieved to have you know good form in the middle order yeah. especially in the likes of kl rahul and uh, you know how he and shreyas ayer also get in the touch along with virat kohli as well he is yeah. always in the form yeah. so let's talk about you know uh, shreyas ayer and kl rahul they both are you know tremendous when it will come to spin to attack the spin and uh, the only weak link that might india have is the you know short ball trouble that shreyas has and they will you know with rocky ferguson and matt henry they will look to test him with that and if we you know neglect that spell i think we will be good yeah i think yeah, that's that's another another major key battle you know not not just, just the players uh, all the pacers versus the middle order because in terms of the openers i think uh, they wouldn't really look to a uh, bolt or matt henry wouldn't look to uh, Bowl a bouncer initially because mm-hmm. when the ball is moving, they'll probably look to pitch it up and get it out or come it, uh, get it come back in. So the later on in the middle overs, uh, probably you you might see perfectly placed even even a, a short ball uh, two to the leg side or too much to the off side. Uh, I think India wouldn't have a pro- problem. But uh, especially Lockie Ferguson, who bowls is really accurate uh, bouncers. Uh, could and and maybe shrayas shrayas like a lot of indian batsmen has this uh, tendency to hook the ball 
uh, it's it's almost natural you know yeah. once they see the ball coming to eye level you know uh, rohit does a great job at it but uh, again uh, kohli and shreyas uh, to an extent rahul as well has a little bit of a uh, tendency to uh, edge the ball up in the air go to the keeper or maybe to find leg or mid wicket so that would be something to look out for as well so now we move on to the fantasy 11 chosen by experts So let's have a look at their picks. Uh, so guys, as you can take a look, I've gone with both Devin Conway and uh, KL Rahul. Even though I need just one keeper, the main reason for this being both these players for their respective teams have played really well. And uh, the batsmen, the top order batsmen that I'm going to go with is Shubman Gill, Virat Kohli, and Glenn Phillips. Again, three players who've been really amazing for their team. And uh, unlike, see, Kohli and Shubman, our top of the order uh, anchor the innings might be looking for a big score. And Glenn Phillips, on the other hand, comes much later on for New Zealand, but looks to have some uh, huge strikes into the ground and get the run rate up. So these three players are really in good touch and would be really looking to, uh, you know, uh, increase their team's chances. Coming to the all-rounders, I have Mitchell Santner, uh, Ravindra Jadeja, and Rachin Ravindra. So I would have liked to have Hardik, but as we all spoke about, we wouldn't really, uh, he wouldn't be playing the next match. So these three players, uh, with their spin bowling and their amazing batting abilities, and also uh, they're pretty much very, uh, uh, you know, sharp in the field as well. So that is something they'd be looking to get uh, points from all three aspects of the game. And coming to my bowlers, I have Trent Bolt again uh, in Dharam Sala, as we spoke about initially, is going to be really threatening. And Bumrah, uh, always, always on point uh, at any aspect of the game, the starting or the depth. And Kuldeep as well. Kuldeep, uh, another wicket taker, not a somebody who contains the runs, but will be looking to take wickets at all aspects. So overall, this would be uh, an amazing, uh, you know, chance at you know getting to be the uh, best eleven. But the captain I'm going with is Virat Kohli. Again, great form, uh, completed his century in the last match. And my vice captain will be Devin Conway for the same reason. Being is an amazing touch, looks to anchor the innings. So he'd be looking to play a long innings without taking uh, much risk initially. So even if they get set, uh, you can definitely expect a big score. So these would be my captain and vice captain picks. So now let's take a look at Shri Ram's picks. Uh, I have gone for a you know bowling oriented eleven. Uh, Uh, my top four batsmen would be uh, Rohit Sharma, Devon Conway, and uh, with adding up Virat Kohli, obviously he will be there. And uh, after him, Rachin Ravindra is there. And my wicket keeper is going to be K L Rahul. He is in tremendous form. We can see like he missed his century in first game, and he is in very good touch. So that's the reason he is going to be my captain as well. And uh, adding it up for the all rounders, it's going to be Ravindra Jadeja, Mitch Santner, two of the you know very best spinning all rounders in the world right now. And uh, in the in the after that, it's going to be Trent Bolt, uh, Bumrah, and uh, Matt Henry. And uh, Bolt is going to be by vice captain since because it's you no know, Dharam Shala, the ball will swing around. So this is going to be my pick. Now it's time to bring back the most exciting and love segment of this encounter, a rapid fire round, in which we'll be asking our experts some fiery questions, and the first one to give five right answers wins. It's going to be a very interesting competition between our experts, and let's see who goes on the top. Yes. So are you guys ready? ready? Yes. So the first question is: Which player took the hat trick against New Zealand in World Cup? Chetan Sharma. That's the right answer. Okay. Okay. Very so well. okay. one point, point. Anil. Yes. Which New Zealand batter scored a fifty when India and New Zealand met in two thousand three World Cup? Uh, is it Michael? No. Uh, Ross Taylor. No. Two thousand three. Oh. It's okay. You guys won't get the answer because no one scored a fifteen that match. The highest oh, score was itself thirty scored by okay. Fleming. So now the score is one zero, and we proceed to the next question. Which New Zealand spinner had taken ten wicket haul against India in Tests? So the options are Daniel Vettori, Azaz Patel, and Nathan Mecklen. Azaz Patel. That's the right answer. So now the score is one all. The next question is which Indian batsman has scored hundred against New Zealand in knockout matches? The option is Sachin Tendulkar, Yuvraj Singh, and Saurabh Ganguly. Sachin? No, that's not Yuvraj? the right answer. No, that's also not the right answer. Okay, so the right answer is Saurabh Ganguly. Right. Okay. Score stays one all. The next question is which bowler bowled the expensive first ball in the history of ODI cricket? The options are Ashdeep Singh, Sean Bond, and Daryl Truffley. Ashdeep. Uh, no, that's not the right answer. 
Shout out That's the wrong answer. The right answer. Wow, we get it. Darren Tuffley. He gave the batsman 15 runs in a single ball. We are bad at this, bro. <laughs> so the score is one all, and let's move to the next question. Which uh, Indian batsman scored his only ODI hundred against New Zealand in World Cup matches? The options are Saurabh Ganguly, Navjot Singh Sidhu, and Sunil Gavaskar. Uh, Sunil Gavaskar. That's the correct answer. So now the score is two one, and the next question is in. What margin did New Zealand beat India in 2016 T20 World Cup? The options are 18 runs, 62 runs, and 47 runs. 62, 47. That's wrong. That's right. So now the score is two all. It's getting intense. Which now the next question is which New Zealand batsman have scored a hundred in World Cup opener? The options are Martin Guptil, Brendan Macklem, and Martin Crowd. Martin Guptil. No. Brendan Macklem. No, that's wrong. Oh. The answer is Martin Crow. Oh, Martin Crow. Mm. Now moving again ahead, since the score is two all, so I'll ask the last question, and whoever scores a point wins this. So the question is, you have to guess the player. I've scored 212 runs in 168 balls, and have the record of the fastest double century in Test cricket. The options are Brendan Macklem, Ben Stokes, Virendra Sehwag, and Nathan Assel. Nathan Assel. That's the right answer, and you win it. <laughs> My second so loss. So we have a winner, room. guys, and that's Sri Ram. Now it's your time to answer. Who will be missed more today by their team? Kane Williamson for New Zealand or Hardik Pandya for India? You can answer us by visiting our Instagram page at the rate ISM World and voting on our story. And now it's prediction time for our experts. So. Like I can already take a hint by seeing the colors you guys are wearing. Oh, definitely not. No. <laughs> so, like, according to you, what do you think is going to take today's match? Uh, I might be wearing black, uh, but I'm definitely uh, vouching for India to stay unbeaten five matches, and uh, it's going to be a very close one. But India should come out on the top. Uh, I feel a bit, you know, on I'm slightly uh, turning in the side of New Zealand. I think they might give uh, India a wake up call. I think they will beat India. Uh, I'm not against India. Don't mistake me. And I'm gonna say, uh, you know, uh, which is a great stat. The last time Virat Kohli scored a century against Bangladesh, it's in 2011. India won the World Cup. No, Virat Kohli scored a century against Bangladesh last time around. So let's see. Now we have seen our experts' prediction, and let's see who conquers the win today. Thank you to all of you for tuning into our show today, and we hope you enjoy the match as much as you enjoyed our show. I'm your host, Sakshi Jain. And these are your experts, Gershom and Shreedam. And we hope to see you all super soon. Thank you.